I am Lisa Dozier Annunziata, I'm owner of Lisa S. Dozier Funeral Service. I knew since I was a child, I actually um, went to South Carolina with my dad when I was a little girl to visit my, um, my great uncle that raised him before he passed away. And when we got to um, South Carolina, he was in the house. He had passed away before we got there. But I was so intrigued, um, I was so interested. I saw him sitting in his reclining chair and it just looked as though he was sleeping. And I guess that was the seed that was planted. It was something that I never outgrew. As a woman of color, um, you have to prove yourself 10 times more than my counterparts. So that within itself is a challenge. And then being able to physically do the work. Um, I'm not only a funeral director, I am a licensed mortician that um, specializes in restorative arts. So having to do most of the things that most men do, I mean, it is a challenge within itself because I don't have the size um, and I am doing a lot of lifting that most men would normally do. So it is, you have your challenges as, as a woman. Just being in business in general, um, men generally are more respected in this field than women, you know. As a business, most people would say this is the business to be in, you know, during a pandemic. But uh, from an emotional perspective, I almost went crazy, almost lost my mind. Um, just seeing so many dead people um, in a short period of time. Um, it's not normal. And um, of course, any business owner would want their business to be successful, but not this way. Um, physically, I, because I do, I'm hands-on, um, I was over, overworked. Um, myself and staff, we worked 20 hour days every single day. Not only was it mentally draining, it was physically draining. Um, I encountered a lot of friends and family members that actually died from COVID. So uh, for me, it wasn't just a job, it was something that affected me emotionally and mentally. Mr. G was my mentor. He actually, um, he actually hired me straight out of school. You have to do a, a year of a resident as, at a sponsoring funeral home. And Mr. G was one of the ones that um, actually took me in. Um, I happened to be passing by this brand new funeral home and I just said, let me get off the bus. And I went across the street to the funeral home. Uh, Mr. G was actually the owner, but uh, when I went into the facility, I didn't know that he was the owner. I knew nothing about him. And um, I was young, I was only like about maybe 23 at the time. And so a little rough under the, you know, <laughs> a little rough. <laughs> and I came in and I didn't have on any, I didn't have a, a formal interview. Um, I didn't know that I was meeting with the owner of that firm. I just came in and I was like, look, I'm just coming out of school. I don't know anything. Uh, can you please tell the owner that I need a job, you know? And whatever, I don't know nothing. And this is what I'm telling him. And I said, make sure you tell him, okay? Not knowing that I was speaking to the actual owner. And um, it was so crazy because um, a couple of days later, Mr. G had his assistant call me and tell me that, and to tell me that I got the job. So this was a God idea. And I say that because um, this was, this was the answer. This was actually the response to um, something that I was dealing with, um, sharing space with another funeral provider. Um, here in New York City, we are allowed 
to share space as a separate entity out of another funeral home. And um, I was sharing space with someone and there was situations where people would come to do services with my firm not knowing that we were not the same entity of the person that I was sharing space with. And so they would think that they were doing business with me and you know the other person would be doing the, handling the funeral arrangements. So that went on for some time and I actually prayed and I asked God to give me a strategic way of letting people know that I was a separate entity. And so here we are in my funeral boutique. I feel that colors evoke, you know, emotion. And I wanted it to be a little lighter, um, a lighter feel. Most places that you go to, it's very dark and dim. And it sort of makes, it sort of puts people in a somber mood. And they're, they're already there because, you know, someone has passed away. And so I, I wanted to create a place, first of all, this, place it speaks of my personality I'm bright you know and so when if you know me you know when you walk in here you'll say this looks this looks a lot like Lisa you know this is my personality and I just <laughs> moved off of that that was the driving force you know to in creating this place and and, and finding someone that can could actually bring to fruition what I was thinking I feel that each and every one of us is given a gift and we're supposed to use that gift to edify God's kingdom. And so God allows me to use my gift so that I can bring them closer to him. Most people that I encounter, like for the most part, most people, I mean, they know of a God, but they don't necessarily have a relationship with God, you know, and so I'm able to just like I was intrigued when I saw my great uncle in that chair, they're intrigued by seeing a young female because people, um, people have their uh, expectations of what a funeral director is supposed to look like and I don't think I fit it. <laughs> That's what I hear all the time. And so, you know, after the initial business uh, uh, conversation, they begin to ask me about you know, how did I get into this business? And I'm able to tell them the story about, you know, not the story, but my life, you know, about me having the relationship, my relationship with God and, and how, you know, different points of my life, I ended up exactly where he wanted me to be. And that was in funeral service. And so I'm able to inspire people, others through my gift that they too can find out what it is that they're gifted in and to go after it, you know. So it's not just about, um, you know, burying someone's loved one. It's, it's bigger than that. It's building relationships and it's, it's just creating an atmosphere where, you know, I can tell someone else about God. Dealing with or, or funeralizing babies. Um, that has been since I, since inception of my career, you know, that has always been difficult for me to actually uh, do the services of someone that has lost, lost a child. And I think being a mother, putting aside my, you know, my professional, my, my, my business, I'm a mother first. And so I understand what it is to, uh, to carry a child for nine months. And so to carry a child for any amount of time and then to lose that child is something that I would not even be able to explain. I don't even know really what to say to the mothers except for I'm here and that I'll help them in any capacity. You know, that's the hardest thing. And it has always been the hardest thing for me in this business. When you believe that you are made to do something, you just have to go after it regardless of what it looked like externally. And you can't allow people to impose their fears on you. As a matter of fact, my husband in particular, he's probably going to kill me, but um, I remember when I was doing this place and, you know, I was so excited and I had to learn that 
when a person is not in a particular industry that you're in, they really don't understand your language. And so I remember coming into this place with my whole family, my mom, my dad, my children, and this place was a mess. And I was so excited when I walked through the doors. I was like, oh my God, because I'm gonna have the urn display over here and the casket display over there and, and the desk is gonna be over, here, over there. And they were looking around like, she sees all of that, and I did. And the fact that they were not as excited as I was when we walked in, it kind of made me feel some type of way. It really did. And then I had to like come to the realization that God gave me that vision. And I couldn't get upset with everybody because they didn't see what I, what I saw because it wasn't meant for them to see it. And so I say that to the person that's trying to pursue any type of, of career choice. Um, God didn't give someone else the vision that he gave you. And so if God gives you a vision, it doesn't matter what anybody else has to say. Just go after it.